At first I thought about framing this video as ways to make your DM's life harder, but let's be honest, we all know what that would be. Take the keen mind feat. Ask to read every book you come across. Wait a second, I'm just describing Caleb Widogast. <laughs> Hello friends, Ginny D here, and if this is your first time on my channel, then welcome! I talk about D&D and tabletop gaming, I make music videos and roleplay practice videos and costumes, and if you like this video, you will probably like a lot of mine. I will link to my D&D playlist in the cards in case you want to check out more. A few weeks ago, we talked about how DMs might be making games unpleasant for their players, so today I thought I would flip the script a little and we can talk about what players can do to make their DMs work easier. Let's face it, DMing is way harder than playing. I don't think there's anyone who would dispute that. Oh wait, we're on the internet! There's always someone ready to dispute. But seriously, DMing is hard. There's so much to pay attention to, and oftentimes players expect their DM to be on top of everything. So I asked Game Masters on Twitter what their players could do to make DMing easier for them. And gosh, they had a lot to say. Today I am going to break down the 10 asks that came up over and over again in this thread, and in conversations that I've had with DMs, and even in my own admittedly limited experiences running games. Of course, every table is different, and your DM might not necessarily agree with all of these things, so as usual, I encourage you to, you know, communicate. You know that stock photo of the guy comically attempting to hold a bunch of limes in his arms? That's your DM during combat. Trying to juggle initiative order, multiple combatants, NPC allies, status conditions, concentration, area of effect spells, difficult terrain, advantage and disadvantage, lair actions, and keep all of it going quickly and efficiently so their players don't get bored. Trust me, your DM is gonna drop some limes. That's why one of the most requested things for players to help with is just keeping track of your own shit. If you hit something with Guiding Bolt, take responsibility for reminding the next player to target that creature that they get advantage. If you're using a concentration spell, remind the DM that you need to make a concentration check after taking damage. Let them know when your turn is over. Just hold like two limes. If everybody at the table participating in this weird lime metaphor holds a few limes, your DM will be left with a much more manageable amount of limes. Why do I suddenly want tequila? I know we're not all Leslie Nope. I mean, I am, but I know that a lot of people aren't. So it's not like every single person has to have a color-coded binder for session notes put together like an aesthetically pleasing and information-rich scrapbook. If you want to see mine, though, I'll put the link to my character journal tour into the cards. <laughs> the point is, you don't have to do all that, but you should consider taking notes. Taking good session notes has not one, not two, but three really key benefits. First, it keeps you focused. If you're taking notes, you are paying attention, which just makes for a better game overall. We'll touch on that more later. Later. Second, it takes the burden off of your DM to remind everybody what's going on. You can take part in the recaps at the beginning of sessions, players can answer each other's questions, and you won't have to be constantly asking the DM to repeat basic world building or lore information. And third, it's likely that your DM is improvising at least some, if not the majority, of what they are telling you in any given session. If you ask for a random NPC's name, chances are that your DM is making it up on the spot, so if you ask what that name was later, they probably won't know. By taking notes, you're increasing the likelihood that somebody documented whatever random answer your DM pulled out of thin air when you asked an unexpected question five months ago. Okay, gut check. What percentage of each session is your DM speaking versus the rest of the party? It can be really exhausting for a DM to be basically performing, delivering non-stop exposition and description for an entire three, four, five hour session. Even the most experienced of game masters need a little downtime to keep up their energy. The easiest way to give them that is just to roleplay amongst yourselves. Spend 15-20 minutes just having a conversation with your fellow party members in character. Get to know each other, engage with each other's backstory, discuss new information or lore that the party has learned, strategize for an upcoming mission or battle. Not only does inter-party roleplay take the heat off of the DM for a while, it also gives you a chance to connect with your party members and develop your character character relationships. It's alive! It's alive! <laughs> it's alive! It's- Ah, oh, dang it. This happens every time I try to create a fun and exciting new monster to challenge my players. 
Sometimes I want to go beyond the classic monsters and hit them with something they've never seen before, but I can't seem to get the hang of conceptualizing, creating, and using my own homebrew monsters. Why don't you try the Kobold Guide to Monsters? Yes, it is alive! Wait, Kobold Guide to what? Monsters! It's a book from Kobold Press in which master writers from across the gaming industry share their simple but effective step-by-step -step processes for creating your own monsters. That does sound useful. What kind of stuff does it cover? How to write great descriptions, motivations, and psychology to drive your monster's behavior, how to use its environment and resources, and even realistic alternatives to just fighting so your encounters have variety. That sounds amazing. Where do I get my copy? From koboldpress.com. Don't worry, there's a link in the description. But do you think I really need it? After all, I made you. Maybe I'm already a master of monsters. Oh no, I'm very bad. You did a bad job. You look fine. No, trust me, I don't have any bloodlust at all. In fact, I'd really like to try gardening. <sighs> Why does this keep happening? Fine. Ask the land kraken to get you a trowel. He's probably in the kitchen making cupcakes. You've probably heard me rant before about how important I think it is for players to have the freedom to create characters that are unique and inventive and that players feel connected to. So please understand that I am not saying that you have to make a certain type of character for your DM's sake. However, I do agree with the many DMs who said that players should at least give them something to work with. If you create a character who doesn't have any reason to be involved with the world, with the plot, with the party, that often puts the onus on the DM to find a way to tie them in. On that same note, make sure that you're thinking at least on a basic level about your character's backstory, personality, and goals. Many DMs want to be weaving things into the plot that will engage and connect with your character, but that's very hard to do if your character is just an empty shell. It doesn't need to be complicated or in-depth or even original, but give your game master something to work with besides your race and class. Let's face it, scheduling is the worst part of tabletop games. And I get it, most of us are adults, we're busy, we have jobs and families and lives, and we can't always drop everything to do a five hour dungeon crawl. But the responsibility of scheduling often falls to the DM, and from what I hear, players are not making it easy on them. For most DMs, the bar is literally on the floor, they just want you to reply to scheduling requests. When they say, hey, how's next Friday at 7 p.m., they don't want to be left on red. But if you want to really help your DM, you might offer to just manage scheduling yourself. Offer to take on the task of connecting with the party to find a date that works for everyone. And most important of all, actually show up to the games. To be honest, I can't believe that this is even something that needs to be said because the only reason to play D&D is that you enjoy playing D&D. Like it's a hobby, we do it for fun. But so many DMs told me that their players sometimes just no call no show to a game they play for fun. Please, please don't do that. Let me explain what I mean by plan ahead, because I am not at all saying that your characters need to know what they're doing. In fact, I would go so far as to say that most D&D characters do not know what they're doing at any given time. But at the end of a session, especially if you're at some sort of hub or stopping point, your DMs are begging you to just give them a little clue about what you want to do next time. If you finish a quest and bed down at the inn in a major city, your DM doesn't know what to prep for next time. Are you going to wake up and try to charter a boat? Are you going to teleport to a completely different city? Are you going to follow up with an NPC that you haven't spoken to in a dozen sessions? Are you going to go to the library to do lore research? If you can just give your DM a heads up at the end of the session, the next one will be much more enjoyable because they will have prepared for it. I can say this from personal experience, nothing takes the wind out of your sails as a DM like looking up and finding your players on their phones. Your game master is working really hard to transport you into a magical world where you can play out all of your adventure fantasies. The least you can do is give them your undivided attention. This especially applies to combat. If your DM has to remind every single player what's going on at the beginning of their turn, combat time is gonna double. Pay attention in between your own turns and have a plan for what you're gonna do before your turn comes up. And yes, sometimes things will happen that force your plans to change, but it's not fair to make everybody sit around while you brainstorm a move that you could have been thinking about for the past 10 minutes if you hadn't been distracted. It bears saying, I have ADHD and I know that it can be near impossible to focus fully on one thing for hours at a time. And if you're like that too, I encourage you to find coping strategies that make the game fun for you, but also work for your DM. I like to doodle during sessions or hand sew, something that occupies my hands, but doesn't stop me from engaging with the game. 
time. Maybe you need more frequent short breaks. Whatever it is, communicate with your DM about your needs. But checking Twitter mid-game? That is not a coping strategy, it's just rude. I will preface this one by saying that not every DM is going to feel the same way about this one, but many people expressed that they wished their players would tell them what they do and don't like about the game. Your DM is trying to provide a fun and exciting experience for you, but that can be hard to do if players aren't giving their game master any feedback. It's especially frustrating to be able to sense that players are not having a good time, but not have any actual information about why or how to fix it. Check in with your DM and just see if they would like players to provide constructive feedback on what they're they're enjoying and what they think might make the game more fun for them. Even if you don't have any critiques, just telling your DM in so many words that you're having a good time can be a huge morale booster. I've noticed that the vast majority of DMs are plagued by insecurities and are often our own worst critics. A little reminder that you appreciate all their hard work can mean more than you might know. The DM already has a lot to keep tabs on without being expected to memorize the entire party's character sheets. It is your job to understand your own character. That means learning your abilities and how they work. It means reading your spells and keeping track of your spell slots. It means remembering that your half-elf has advantage on saving throws against being charmed, or that your halfling character gets to reroll ones. It means learning what sneak attack means. This isn't just a matter of mechanics either. You should do your best to learn anything narrative that your character should know too. For for example, if you play a paladin or a cleric, you should read up on your chosen god. If your DM gives you information that your character would know, write it down so you can reference it later. Your character is your responsibility, so keep track of their shit. A bunch of DMs said that they wished their players would just take ownership of the game a little more often. They're tired of having to ask their players what they want to do, or worse, even suggest courses of action. When the DM describes a room, don't just sit there expectantly afterwards waiting for something to happen. Ask about it. Do you want to look closer at something? Do you want to open a drawer or a cabinet? Do you want to check something for traps? You don't have to wait for your DM to call for a skill check in order to do something. You can say, I'd like to look for tracks in the mud, or can I examine the body to figure out how it died? Don't make your game master hold your hand. One of the most exciting parts about D&D is that it's open world. You can do pretty much anything, so do something. Don't make your DM drag it out of you. I'm not saying you need to do all 10 of these things, but if you want to show a little appreciation for your DM, just consider these suggestions as ways to take some of the pressure off. They're working really hard to create a fun game for you. Make it as easy as possible for them and everyone will have a better time. Do you have any tabletop related topics that you would like me to address in a video? Please let me know in the comments. And if you found this useful, make sure to check out my D&D advice playlist for more and subscribe so that you won't miss future videos. And so I can keep creeping closer to that shiny golden play button. Only 775,000 left to go. <sighs> There's no tequila in this, it's sparkling water. <laughs>